lights seen in the sky have caused a deluge of frantic calls to the police and military switchboards across the nation. Tracking stations around the world are maintaining a constant vigil on the progress of the mysterious sightings. Here is another view of the fiery trail that flashed across the eastern horizon just before midnight last night. Photos like this are coming in from laboratories on all points of the globe. This one is from the Seacoast Observatory. And the key Maximus oceanographic ship anchored in the mid-Pacific. In less than an hour, international communications by way of satellite and undersea cables brought a flood of inquiries from around the world. But they weren't all inquiries. Hundreds of witnesses reported falling airplanes, flying saucers from outer space, and speculation on the existence of swamp gas in the troposphere. No opinions have yet been released from official sources. Neither can they deny that something, an unidentified flying object, if you will, did trace a fiery trajectory from the upper atmosphere to a landing on Earth. We will interrupt regular programs on this channel to bring you further news reports on this mysterious phenomenon. Today's news broadcast was directed by Clark Hart. Okay, that's it, gang. Back to work. How about giving them a hand to find that firebomb, Skipper? <laughs> What's the matter, Scotty? Not enough action in oil exploration? It don't exactly set the world on fire. That UFO might. Can't we volunteer, Captain? You too, Ronnie. Look, our playground is here in the Arabian Sea. And unless your UFO drops on top of us, we're stuck looking for oil. Okay, Ronnie. Now, as you know, the gravimeter detects variations in the strength of the Earth's gravity under the ocean floor. A very slight deviation in the strength of gravity might indicate a dome containing oil. Now, the gravimeter is a complex and highly sensitive instrument, but the signals we've been getting are way off the scale. But, uh, Captain, is it not possible that these variations are caused by something else? A shark, perhaps? It won't take long to find out, Suzette, if it is. <laughs> Actions speak louder than words, Ronnie. You all set? Yes, sir. Ronnie, I think you are a very brave young man to go down in this part of the ocean. Well, let's get going, lad, before your head gets too big for your helmet. the graph meter now. It's in position, Captain. Moving in for a look at the connections. Uh-oh. I think I've got it. The control panel cable has pulled loose from the main stem. Then he will need that special kit of tools. Aye, and Biff's the one to take him to him. Suzette, Wilbur. We, oui, Captain. Here you are, lads. He could fix a whole submarine with this little packet. I love this, my little cutie pie baby. We have a little job for you, my aunt and Sherry, baby. All right, you two. Cut out the sweet talk. We've got a job to do. There. Does this not look so beautiful in his work on it? <laughs> bon voyage. <laughs> Hiya, Beth. Where you been, old boy? With these tools, I can fix this thing in a jiffy. Miss Perkins, I'd like to confirm our position. Certainly, Professor Jones. North, 15 degrees. East, 68 degrees. 14 minutes. Excellent. So far, we've explored this third of the concession area. The oil-bearing domes we found on shore are good indications we should find oil along this shelf. Agreed. Sheik Blackgold was quite generous in granting the oil company 5,000 square miles to survey. Professor! Look at the gravimeter gauge. Yes, that's extraordinary. Captain? That's an oddball needle jump. What's up, Wilbur? It's never registered a deviation like this before. The answer's down there with Ronnie and Biff, Captain, and the gravimeter. Captain, 
call for you on the Washington priority line. Okay, I have it, thanks. Argonaut, foreign continental limits, Fathom here. Fathom Mechanical here. I've got to see you immediately, urgent business. I'm on urgent business, Admiral. Look, this project is critical. If we don't make a strike in short order, Sheik Black Gold will cancel the oil company's right to work here. If we don't make a strike in short order, the whole free world could be canceled out. Take your choice, Fathom. All right, Maggie, what's it all about? You heard about the UFO that's causing the uproar? Yeah. It landed in the Somali Basin. That's all that's in your lap. Somali Basin? That's a mighty big lap. Two of our Navy destroyers had the position pinpointed. Why don't they pick it up? I said they had it pinpointed, Captain, in sight. When they moved in to investigate, the UFO disappeared. When the Argonauts' graphometer began to record strange readings, Ronnie and Biff were sent down to find the cause of the trouble. As they work, they are unaware that Captain Fathom has just been informed that an unidentified flying object has fallen into the ocean not far from the Argonaut. Argonaut at north, 15 degrees. East, 68 degrees, 14 minutes. Stand by. Admiral McGonagall calling again, Captain. Okay, got it. Fathom here. Go ahead, Admiral. Here's the detail, Fathom. There's no question that the unidentified flying object landed near your position. Our two destroyers raised two Russian battleships and a British destroyer to the sea. Our people got there first, but they moved into close to the object. It disappeared. No clues left in the water? A small patch of phosphorescent glow. Maybe a chemical leak. Enough to show it was moving east. East? Well, then it wasn't moving with a current. How do you figure that? Seasonal shifting of the monsoon winds, Admiral. In winter, currents in the Arabian Sea move west, not east. That's right. So the UFO was either towed away or moved under its own power. From now on, the code name for it is the prize. Our government can't officially investigate any more in that area. You can figure the prize as one of three things. A craft from outer space, a device launched secretly from Earth for some devious purpose, or... Or uh, a booby trap, maybe? Could be. You pick it up and explode an atom bomb in that touchy section of the world. That's it. Three choices. Yeah. So what am I supposed to do, Maggie? It's got to be us that gets that prize, Fathom. Grab it. Scotty, bring up Ronnie and Biff. We've got some detective work to do. Aye, aye, sir. Your coffee, Capitan. Well, why, thanks, Suzette. And the biscuits I have baked for you from my own recipe. I'll bet. Mm, nice. These foamy touches are always nice to have aboard. Uh, if I can do anything for you in return, why, you let me know, Suzette, huh? Oh, yes, I will, Capitan. But uh, it is enough for me if it makes you happy. Mm, delicious, Suzette. Beats me how you can make goodies like this. Any cookbook will show you, Captain. Do excuse the interruption, but I have something on sonar that might prove more urgent than sampling French pastries. Oh, um, uh, affirmative, Miss Perkins. I, too, must go back to work. And, uh, Capitan, do not let your coffee get cold, eh? Uh, yes. Uh, no, uh, uh, range, bearing? Zero three miles at one four seven degrees. Speed, ten knots. You're indeed, Captain. You want to run silent? Negative, Scotty. We're close enough to take her in pursuit. Let's go get it, gang. Miss Perkins, plot an intercept bearing. Yes, sir. Ronnie, full right rudder to 147. All ahead, V-10. Aye, aye, sir. Wilbur, got an answer yet? Well, it's more like a clue, Captain. You know when we had the gravimeter down on the ocean floor and got that unusual deviation reading? Yeah. I want to know what would cause the Earth's gravity to jump. Nothing. But if a powerful magnetic force passed by, it could have caused the indicator to jump. Hmm. The recovery craft could have used a magnet of some kind to grab off the prize, then towed it past us on their way out of the area. Then you think the prize is part of an Earth-launched space mission, Captain? Oh, it adds up. Something went wrong, and it fell short of a calculated landing spot. Of course. The fiery tail was caused by re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. 
gave their big secret worldwide publicity. Whoever launched it will have to recover it to keep the purpose of the mission from being exposed. We're on the merry-go-round with them, Wilbur. One try at the brass ring. We'd better grab it. Fathom and the crew of the Argonaut are trailing an unidentified flying object which fell into the ocean not far from their submarine. They have been informed it is absolutely necessary they recover this object before it falls into enemy hands. Steady as she goes. I see it up ahead, sir. Off the port bow. Roger. All back, two-thirds. Aye, sir. All back, two-thirds. Man, that's an ugly-looking beast. How do you identify it, Captain? It's a submagnetron, a floating magnet. Haven't seen one in years. Any people inside that contraption, Skipper? People? No. It generates its own power and has a built-in directional device. Its command is sent by remote control from an outside source. A ship, maybe, or even another submarine. And that cruising dynamo generates enough magnetic force to tow derelict ship wreckage and stray torpedoes, or even small submarines. Huh. And that's the prize we're after? Stuck on its back? That's it. That's our prize. Steady as she goes, Ronnie. Aye, sir. I'm getting another signal, Captain. Something metal, but it's not moving. The submagnetron has come to a stop, Captain. Near a giant metal object. Ah, yes, with precious cargo. Bring it in. Oh, a new signal. Other craft approach. So, a trespasser. Send out tractor gun. Very good, sir. comes a stranger. Hey, the crazy fool is shooting at us. We've been hit. Dive, dive. Get for that coal. A damage report. We're okay down here, Captain. Port stabilizer sheared. Damage on the port bow. How long will it take to repair? Can we get out of here? Negative. But we ought to have it plugged up in short order, Captain. 30 minutes at the most. Oh, that's 30 minutes too long. They're bound to come back and finish us off. Stand by to launch the sea dart. Aye, aye, sir. That's very dangerous, Captain. We're safe behind this coil reef. What do you expect to accomplish from an aerial view? Yes, Captain. The door is obviously an entrance to a hidden chamber inside an island. Just keep your delicate, shell-shaped ears to that receiver, Perky, and I'll let you know. The Argonaut has been fired upon and disabled by an enemy submarine, which has disappeared behind a strange iron door. Captain Fathom is taken to the sea dart in order that he might find the enemy's whereabouts and draw their attention until the Argonaut can be repaired. Dart airborne. Roger, Dart. Airborne, zero 07. Argo, Argo, Papa's found home base. What is it, Captain? A lighthouse. 
What's on the chart for this position? Checking. Here it is, Captain. I find a group of coral atolls. No large island, no other... Wait, it shows a navigation buoy. There's no lighthouse there. Repeat, no lighthouse. You going to believe me or the chart, Miss Perkins? It's a lighthouse, Captain. Probably abandoned and operation replaced by a boy. A perfect hideout for those creeps. I'll stay down on the deck to keep their radar from picking me up. Tell Pete and Freddy to hurry up repair on the Argonaut's bow while I figure out our next move. You better think fast, sir. We're ready to shove off. Pronto. Roger. I'm going to swing past that lighthouse again. It could be the nerve center of this whole operation. What are you trying? Can I understand the voice of the radio? So? You have your lifetime to explain. 30 seconds from now. Well, let's see. Radio, I told the perfect. But they told from the security frequency. Scramble oh, word. Very clever. You got no ping on sonar? No blip on radar? Nothing, sir. No, nothing. Nothing? You say we hear voices of ghosts? <laughs> can kind of explain the voices. <laughs> then you die, sibling dog. Enemy plane go by low on water. So, they come by air. Clever. Airplane direct invasion by submarine. All a turret gun to track plane and liquidate. We just must <laughs> Argo, Argo, this is Dart. Okay, here's your move. Over. Argo standing by. Over. Scotty, get underway. Head direct for the big door. Wedge the bow inside. Ram it, sir? That's a solid steel door. I said wedge the bow in. They've got to open it first. They will, Scotty, when they see us approaching. Aye, you're right. Let that cannon out. You stay at the helm, Ronnie. Take your orders from Scotty. Aye, aye sir. Hot ziggities. We'll blast them. I've got a score to settle with that cannon boat. What about you, Skipper? As soon as Miss Perkins reports the door is open, I'll attack the control room in the lighthouse. My compliments on your strategy, Captain. Save it till it works, Miss Perkins. And Scotty, once you get inside, grab that prize and get out fast. Right. How are you, Arden Skipper? Let's get underway. I'm going to come about now for another pass at the lighthouse. Do be careful, Captain. They're bound to have sighted you. Dart have been shot down by the notorious Chang. The Argonauts crew is now underway to carry out Captain Fathom's last instructions. Hello, Dart. Do you read, Dart? Captain Fathom! Oh, answer me, please! Suzette? Yes, sir? You and Wilbur let Biff out. Maybe he can help the captain. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. The plan's working, Scotty. The door's opening. Easy, lad. I can just get to the dart's diving compartment before she sinks. Just a few more feet. <laughs> Scotty, it's Biff. He's swimming away. Get him out of there, lad. He 
won't obey my signals. Blast it! He's nothing but a dumb animated fish! That's not true, Scotty. He's... Well, I'll be. Look at that. He's drawing the fire away from us. Do me a favor, lad. What? Whistle out an apology for me. Sure, Scotty. Aye, aye, close the door! Big enemy somebody in the porch! You're stuck! Door don't work right! Get to animate him quick! They have failed, Chang. They must pay for their stupidity. Leave them below. Hold it right there, you double dealing cheaters. No shoot! No shoot! No no shoot. shoot. Hey, Ronnie, give me a hand with this thing. Captain Fathom, Biff, and you found the hidden prize. You made it. You're okay. We thought you were a goner. Any landing you can swim away from is a good one, I guess. Let Biff guard the prisoners. Come on, help me get this prize aboard the Argonaut. You hear that? The skipper came through, and, and he found a high pollutant and pricey. Oh, thank goodness. All right, you fool. Our rascal shelf does not answer, Chang. He is our only hope to escape, idiot. Make him answer. The prize is safely aboard, Captain. Can't we go? She's right, skipper. We'd best get out of here. Captain, Chang is signaling. I believe he wants to talk to you. Chang. Fathom here. So, Captain, you have stolen the prize. I must congratulate you. What's on your mind, Chang? You aren't calling just to pass the time of day. Quite right, Captain. I have a small proposition in mind which might interest you. No deal, Chang. Your claws have been clipped. As far as I'm concerned, you're our prisoner. Not quite, Captain Fathom. You still do not have Chang and chains. It is one thing to clip my claws. It is quite another to cage the tiger. He's stolen, Captain. I know, he's up to something. Ronnie, back us out of here. Yes, sir. Captain Fallon? Chang, you've got two minutes to come out of there before we blow your place apart. I'm very sorry, Captain, but it is you who is being blown apart. Goodbye, Captain. <laughs> Chang just blew himself up. Here comes Biff, smiling like he's been up to something. What did you do, Biff, baby? I don't know what Biff was doing out there, but we got the prize. Professor Jones analyzed its contents. Enough iodide chloroscull to wipe out every underseas farm on our west coast. <laughs> Our full crew is present and accounted for, Captain. Right, Suzette. Okay, let's take the prize home, Ronnie. Yes, sir. <laughs> 